Okay, so if you clicked on this video, you were probably in the market to buy one of your first pair of running shoes, but honestly, where do you start? There are so many brands out there and types of shoes that it's a really daunting experience to figure out exactly what running shoe you should get based off your needs specifically. And so in this video, I'm gonna speak a little bit about why running shoes are so important, what type of foot you have, and how do you measure that at home, running gait, what is that, and why you should know what yours is, and then lastly, if you're training in race day shoes, why you should probably stop right away. Now, running shoes are so important because they are designed in a way to give you max cushioning while providing enough stability and support for your joints and your muscles. They also have a snug fit to ensure that you reduce the potential of any blistering, and they tend to be very breathable to ensure that your feet remain dry no matter how long you're out there. Now, if you have the opportunity to go to a specialized running store, they have equipment where it will properly measure your feet be able to track exactly what your running gait is and ultimately give you some really sound advice of what brands and shoes you should be looking for. But if you're not located next to a specialized running store, there are certain things you could do at home to give you a little bit more guidance. So when it comes to your foot type, there is the wet paper method. Now with the wet paper method, what you're gonna do is you're gonna spray the bottom of your foot and you're gonna step on a piece of paper. The more of your foot you see, the flatter your foot is. And the flatter your foot, typically the more cushioning that you're gonna to wanna to have in your shoe. And so if you see pretty much the majority of your foot on the piece of paper, that means you tend to probably have more of a flat foot. And if you see less of your foot, you are probably a higher arch. Now, if you only see about 50% of your foot, that probably means you're more of like a neutral flat foot type, and that gives you a lot of options. Now, if you are high arch, you can go for a neutral shoe that's gonna give you a little less cushiony, but allow your foot to be able to move around a little bit more in the shoe itself. If you are on the more flat side, you're gonna wanna go ahead and get more of a stability shoe or a motion control shoe, uh, and that's going to ensure that your foot doesn't have a lot of wiggle room within the shoe, but it's gonna give you the proper support and cushiony you need to ensure there is no potential of injury down the road. Once you know your foot type, it's time to go ahead and measure your running gait. Now, you have two different options here. You could have somebody videotape you while maybe you run on a treadmill, and you what you want to take notice of is what part of your foot hits the treadmill first. If you have a old pair of running shoes like myself, you could also look at the sole and see exactly what part of the bottom of the shoe is worn out the most. Uh, and so if you're gonna do the treadmill, uh, just go ahead and see exactly what part of your foot's hitting the treadmill first. If you are hitting the treadmill on the outside, then that probably means that you're an under pronator like myself. When you look at a pair of my old running shoes, you see that the outside is worn much more than any other part of the bottom of the shoe. If you are a neutral running gait, that means that you hit the ground pretty consistently on all sides of your feet. Uh, and then lastly, for the over pronator, that means that you are tending to roll your ankles inward and you are hitting the insides of your feet more every stride that you take. One's not better than the other, it's just good to know exactly what running gait you are because that'll give you some guidance on whether or not you should get a stability shoe or a neutral shoe or a uh, motion restricted shoe. One note I want to make is that not all shoes are going to be created equal and running shoes only tend to last about three to 400 miles. And some of my shoes have lasted up to 400 miles, such as like my Hoka Clifton 8s before I went ahead and retired them. Whereas the Hoka Bondi 8s that I have currently are at about 270, 280 miles and I'm probably only going to be able to put another 30 or 40 miles on them before I have to retire them. So you're not always going to get the same length of life. If you want to ensure that you get as much life out as possible, if you find a running shoe that you really enjoy, I'd encourage you to get two pairs. You could rotate them every other run. That'll allow your shoes to properly be able to uh, inflate the cushioning to ensure that it just has time to rest and be ready for whatever next run you're taking. Okay, so for race day shoes, there's a few things you want to take note of. Race day shoes are designed to give you a springier step for every stride that you take because the midsole is going to be much more light and airy, but that does mean it's going to be a bit more delicate. And because of this, the shelf life of race day shoes will be much lower than your typical daily trainers. And so with race day shoes, you can get a good four or five half marathons or full marathons out of them before you potentially need to retire them. But for using them for daily training, one, they're very expensive and you're only gonna get about 200 to 250 miles in them before you need to go ahead and rotate them and get new ones. Uh, and then more importantly, your feet will become weaker over time because your feet need to work less in these types of shoes. Hence, it's phenomenal for race day, but if you are training them on an ongoing basis, your feet will become weaker weaker over time and you will be prone to more injuries along the way. So use your daily trainers for specifically training your long runs and your tempo runs and then when you're about to go into your race day, rotate into the race shoes, break them in slightly, but then only use them for race day to maximize your power output.